then uh, Ted Grossman, uh, I know you're familiar with the Alexander Group? I am. So they're, uh, you know, fantastic. I actually just did a uh, invite-only CRL webinar with them uh, earlier that went over really well, but they're a uh, uh, fantastic group. So he says, uh, Ted says, uh, Carl, in the last several years, uh, you see titles like CRO, CCO, are you a believer in cross-functional go-to-market leaders, or do you like more of single focus management? And I'll add on there specifically, do you think a CMO and CRO function should be separate or uh, on one under another? Um, I, I don't think it's a one size fits all answer. Um, I believe at a certain scale, you can have a CRO uh, a title. Um, it's funny, I was on a board meeting call today, they're gonna hire a CRO and the first thing I asked the CEO is what functions will the CRO have responsibility for? Because they're gonna have the CRO term, in my opinion, is super overused. Uh, right. You know, does it own customer success? Does it own support? Does it own pre-sales? Does it own marketing? Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that can be included in that or not. I will tell you what gets put under the CRO title depends on the CRO. Yep. I know CROs who have the responsibility for everything that is customer facing. Uh, and then I know CROs who basically run the sales function. I don't think it's one size fits all. Yeah, totally. And uh, by, by the way, I don't know if you know, actually, I have a uh, recruiting business. I'm sure you use all these you know, fancy uh, re retained firms, but uh, we can do a good job for you as well. If somebody wants good, good, great, great people and good, good value. So um, anyway, uh, moving on, uh, Ken Doherty, uh, great sales leader, uh, Dell says uh, this discussion podcast spectacular. Uh, Carl, you mentioned two approaches when investing. Uh, one, startups that create a, a new market opportunity and two, companies that have disruptive technology in the existing market with the large TAMs. In today's macroeconomic climate, do you have a preference? Uh, no, I, I don't have a preference, to be honest. In fact, some of the greatest companies uh, in technology started during down markets. Uh, you know, when you start a company, um, it takes many years. There's very few flash in the pans that emerge in one or two years and have hundreds of millions of dollars. So uh, I don't think one or the other uh, is correlated to the current market environment we're in because both will take a while. Even if you're going to go disrupt an existing market, Randy, it takes a while to build the technology, build the team, and find a repeatable sales process in motion. So I don't think uh, we're open to both. And it also, to be honest, it depends on what stage you're investing. If it's a seed or an early stage company, it's an idea. Uh, if it's a growth company, you'll know what type of market they're going out to either build, uh, you know, create or disrupt. So I don't think... Uh, the current market uh, conditions uh, sway us to focus on one area or the, or another. Yeah, and I, I would imagine Sequoia takes a much longer term view. So not that the current environment doesn't matter, but you know, you, you're kind of playing for, as you said, several years, it could be five, 10 years down the road, not necessarily now, correct? Exactly. Uh, what we know about cycles is they go up and down. And, you know, even if we're in a down market, it will go up again at some point. And we're here to weather the storm with our companies uh, and get them to the other side. That's why we focus. One of our key sayings is helping people build enduring businesses that will stand the test of time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have from Brian Gregory. Great discussion. Trust always matters with the customer. And as uh, Ken Doherty and others, I don't know if you ever knew Walter Brown, but he was early on consultant at EMC. And uh, one of his several sayings were, uh, know me, like me, trust me. Uh, and then Carl says, great conversation. Thanks, Randy and Carl. So I'm going to try and get to at least one of these several questions that uh, <laughs> we prepared ahead of time. Uh, maybe talk about um, the ideas kind of secret sauce when it comes to leadership. So maybe uh, focus specifically kind of from a CRO perspective, uh, top of mind thoughts there. Well, secret it doesn't necessarily have to be C C C C sorry, it doesn't necessarily, necessarily need to be CRO because, you know, generally speaking, you know, leadership is leadership. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that leadership spans all functions or roles uh, or organizations that you're leading. I mean, um, 
And it, it's an area that I am very passionate about, Randy. I could talk you know, for about 100 hours on leadership, uh, speaking of episode 100. Um, but I'll just throw out the things that are at least important to me that I try to mimic as best I can. And again, I don't have all the answers. So the first key thing to successful leaders, they are typically very humble and grounded and they all remember where they came from. I always tell people, as you get promoted, you're getting promoted typically in your career because of who you are. It doesn't mean when you get that next job, you need to change who you are. Continue being you who you are, but the key things are to remain humble and grounded in all you do. I also think great leaders are authentic, and they are not afraid to be vulnerable. Saying I don't know is sometimes the greatest answer of all. Absolutely. And no one has all the answers. But I also know no one wants to work with someone or for someone who believes they have all the answers, right? Uh, I think, you know, it's just, it's not fun and people see right through it. I also think I, what I say, Randy, is E and E are contagious. And people say, what is E and E? Well, it's energy and enthusiasm, especially as a sales leader. If they're energetic and they have enthusiasm, you've seen it, Randy. You walk into a room, a conference room, you're at a sales kickoff conference. You know when that person has energy and they're enthusiastic, it just permeates the rest of the organization. And as a leader, we talked about earlier, people are watching you, right? So if you don't have that like, I just think it's a, it's a lost art and trait, and you can't teach that. That's just how people right. are. Um, and then just because we're short on time, uh, I think there's three types of leaders. Uh, and for those people who maybe heard me speak about this in the past, you'll recognize it. I think there's first type of leader out there is the motivational leader. And we all probably like working for a motivational leader. But if you stop and just think about what a motivational leader does, he or she pushes people. Motivation is a push technique. And that's great because that's how you get the best of your people. You need to push them. You need to drive them. And we all have a motivational button in our body. At some point, the leader's responsibility is to figure out what that is and push it. At the same time, Randy, there's another type of leadership that I personally think can be or is more powerful. And that's the inspirational leader. And the reason I say that, if you think about an inspirational leader, it's not a push technique, it's a pull technique. They draw people into them. They draw them into their mission, their objective, their strategy. And then that team doesn't wanna let her or him down. That's an inspirational leader. And then the third level of leadership is the one who knows how to do both. Because there are times, Randy, when you needed to be pushed probably and get that little extra out of Randy. But then there's other times people inspired you and pulled you in. So the leaders who can do both you know, motivational leader and inspirational leaders simultaneously and figure out to experiences when to use which one, I think end up being the best leaders out there on the planet. Absolutely. And then um, I'm not sure if it's a different level or cascades across all of them, but I know something we're both uh, big believers in is uh, kind of leading by example as well. I mean, there's so many times I think you have leaders that do what you just said, but they're like, oh, yeah, the rep's not doing this, rep's not doing that. Well, what are you doing to actually show them? What are you doing to then reach out to that prospect, to be on that call, to do the follow-up, to work with whatever the executive is above them to say, okay, here's how we're going to handle that objective. Here's how we're going to push for lack of better words to get the deal done, showing the value and everything else, and then kind of recap that for your org to say, look, here's a situation. I'm not going to throw so-and-so under the bus, take it as learning opportunity, but that's something with that leading by example area that today I just see lacking. Yeah, I, it's well said. Another way to describe those people are do the dishes leader. Is the leader when they yeah. walk into the break room or the kitchen willing to go and you know clean the dishes that are in the sink? Uh, they should be. Now, yeah. let me also then a little bit um, speak out of the other side of my mouth or contradict what we both just said. I think there's another type of leadership out there everyone talks about, but I don't think it's well understood. And we won't get into the details. I'll give it a very surface level, uh, you know, um, discussion here is. 
everyone says they want to be or they try to be a servant leader. And if you asked everyone on this call what servant leadership means, I will tell you, you'll get a different answer from almost everyone. But if yeah. you go and study what true servant leadership is, think about the very first word of servant leadership, and that is to serve. And I fundamentally believe the greatest leaders, regardless of role or capacity, are the ones that serve their people. Yeah. They're not leading them. And through that servant type approach, your leadership gets displayed and everyone becomes more successful. Absolutely. Amen. For sure. I call it the kind of reverse pyramid, uh, which usually people have a hard time de dealing with. So all right, I'm going to try and, try and do uh, uh, two quick questions here. Actually, I, I have to chime in if it's OK. Ken, uh, who I respect immensely, best leaders action oriented. No better example action oriented leadership than Randy. Appreciate that. And, you know, Carl, amazing example. So um, uh, second to last question, uh, Carl, what book are you reading now? You know, to be honest, I'm not a big reader, uh, you know, but uh, there's a couple books that are on my nightstand that are always there. Uh, one uh, is is called Halftime uh, by Bob Buford, um, which is a super uh, powerful book for people trying to understand the importance of their own life and how to shift their life from a life of success, which we all had at one point, to a life of significance. And I will tell you as a leader, when you move from focusing on success in your own success to focusing on significance and being a servant leader and how you impact others, your success goes up dramatically. And then the other book that is on my nightstand is actually a book, Randy, written by my sister called Abound. And it is very specifically, uh, you know, um, yeah. about servant leadership. Uh, it's a really interesting book that my sister wrote. Uh, that I uh, always keep next to my nice stand to remind me of who I am, where I came from, and how I should act as a leader. Wow, awesome. And I'll, I'll put in a shameless plug. You're kind enough to give me a testimonial for uh, your, your go-to sales advisor. So thank you. Lots of, of uh, great yeah. folks. Ken Doherty, Ken Groey, uh, Chris Riley, others participated. So maybe uh, last question. Um, any uh, PG Randy story that you have? Uh, I have lots of stories, but I'm not sure they're PG, Randy. Um, so uh, sorry, I can't give any uh, any PG. I'm being facetious. Listen, I don't have any PG stories. The one thing I've always appreciated about you, Randy, and this wasn't you didn't ask me to say this or you didn't give me any warning on any of this stuff. So I appreciate that. I'd rather do things on the fly. I just appreciate your leadership over the, the years. Um, but something I appreciate probably more than that is just your commitment and loyalty to your family, uh, to your children and being there for their sporting events and finding a time to live that balanced life uh, between your professional career and all the success you had and making sure that the family is uh, first and foremost uh, top of mind for you. I think that's something that's really hard for people to do uh, when they find success. Uh, and it's super important to find uh, that balance. Actually, Randy, in your living proof of this, I think, you know, people say work-life balance. I think it's really hard because it does get out of balance. It's impossible not to. I think if you focus on the word harmony, how do you have work-life family harmony? Then it all works together as one. And sometimes it gets in balance and sometimes it's out of balance, but it's harmonized to give you a great life, both personally and professionally. And I think I've seen you do that nicely. Great. Thank you very much. It uh, mean, means a lot uh, for, for sure. Uh, and actually, I have, uh, it didn't quite come up, but uh, Janet just re redecorated my uh, office down here. So we got Tommy's uh, Alabama banner and then uh, Billy's White Sox banner. So, and I, and I try and cover, I, try, if I, I, I have my BC, but I try my best to cover my, uh, try and cover Janet's Notre Dame. She uh, snuck that one in there on me. So, um, all right. So you've been fantastic. Uh, Harlan says, roll tide, go White Sox, go Eagles. Uh, Dan, thanks. So, uh, Carl, uh, everybody watching, thank you so much. Um, Gong, fantastic uh, uh, revenue intelligence platform. I think will evolve to be one of the uh, bigger, better uh, sales tech stack leaders, certainly over time. Uh, Carl, uh, amazing partner at Sequoia. Thank you so much for your amazing insights. Uh, hopefully we can get you back here as well. And uh, for those that are not members of sales community, you can join salescommunity.com 
And for those that are, thank you very much. And uh, this gets uh, rebroadcast by Tucker uh, all over the social mediums. And uh, Tucker, uh, thanks for your help uh, beneath or uh, behind the scenes here. So, uh, Carl, thanks so much. Have a great one. Randy, thank you. And thank you for all you're doing for the sales community out there, including Gone.